In the book of Revelation, the Apostle John saw a terrifying vision of four grim horsemen. The second rider, on a red horse, carried a great sword and took peace from the earth. Is this a symbol of the destruction and devastation of past wars? Or does this awesome specter have significance for us today? Join us this week on The World Tomorrow as we examine the Red Horseman of the Apocalypse. On a small island off the coast of Turkey, nearly 1900 years ago, Jesus Christ revealed a series of astonishing prophetic visions to the Apostle John. John wrote down the visions he saw, and the record became the last book of the Bible. It's called the Apocalypse, or Book of Revelation. The visions were filled with mysterious symbols and dreadful creatures, and told of frightening events to come. Among the images John saw in vision, were the legendary four horsemen of the apocalypse. Few messages are more important for us to understand as we approach the critical last decade of this 20th century. On this week's World Tomorrow program, we'd like to explain the meaning of that important vision with special emphasis on the red horsemen of the apocalypse. Let's begin by taking a look at the frightening specter of the four horsemen recorded in the sixth chapter of Revelation. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seat, Another horse, fiery red, went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. the third seal, I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. sat on it was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. These are terrifying images, but what do they symbolize? And do they have any relevance for us today? As we've explained on past programs, the message of the four horsemen was not primarily for John's day, but for another generation, one that would live at the time of the greatest danger to mankind, a time the Bible calls the last days or the end of the age. The ultimate fulfillment of these prophecies lies just ahead. The devastating sequence of events symbolized by these horses will climax in the lifetimes of many of us today. But happily, it's not all bad news. As we'll see later, there's good news beyond these prophesied cataclysmic events. Approximately one-third of the Bible is prophecy, so we don't have to be ignorant of the future course of world affairs. John's visions were recorded to give us understanding. 
No doubt many will choose to ignore or reject this advance information, and sadly, they'll be taken by surprise when these prophesied events begin to erupt on the world scene. And being caught off guard can have disastrous consequences, as many learned in World War II. The morning of December 7, 1941, seemed like any other Sunday morning on the island of Oahu, Hawaii. Then, without warning, disaster struck. The peaceful Sunday calm was shattered. Wave after wave of Japanese aircraft descended out of a quiet morning sky, dealing death and destruction to the U.S. naval bases at Pearl Harbor. All were caught unaware. Hundreds died. Thousands more were injured. Yes, a few military analysts had warned of the potential for such a strike. They'd read the signs of the times, but their warnings weren't heeded. And there's a strong message in that for us today. It's only at our own peril that we close our eyes and remain ignorant of what lies ahead. Forewarned is forearmed, the old saying goes. That's why we need to thoroughly understand the red horseman of the apocalypse. And the key to understanding the true meaning of the red horse and its rider is found in a prophecy spoken by Jesus Christ. Just days before his crucifixion, Jesus outlined a succession of events that would lead up to his second coming. They were the signs of the end of this present age. Christ listed those signs in a sequence, and they have a striking parallel with the four horsemen. The prophecies of Revelation are, in fact, an expansion of Jesus' prophecy spoken on the Mount of Olives. Both prophecies discuss the same future time, and when read side by side, the outline of coming events becomes quite clear. We don't have to guess about the symbolism of the four horsemen. Their meaning is crystal clear because the Bible interprets its own symbols. The identity of the white horseman has caused a great deal of confusion among theologians who usually suggest that it stands for Jesus Christ. The white horseman corresponds to the first theme of Jesus' Olivet Prophecy and is not Jesus Christ, as many commentators have suggested. Notice Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. According to Jesus Christ himself, the white horseman represents deceivers or false teachers. These deceivers come from all directions and in many different guises. Some will come in Christ's name. They're false ministers preaching a counterfeit gospel. Other deceivers come in other names. Some come not at all in the name of religion, but in the form of political ideologies that subvert true religion. Keep in mind that deceivers false messiahs may come in religious or political garb, and both can exhibit religious zeal or fanatical devotion to their causes. Following swiftly on the heels of the white horse and its rider comes another frightening specter. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. And another horse, fiery red, went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. This shocking image clearly signifies war. Notice the sword-wielding rider takes peace from the earth. And this second horseman corresponds to Christ's second theme in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But you might ask, hasn't this been the pattern throughout all history? The answer, of course, is yes, a general condition of war has been a hallmark of man's experience. 
How then can war be a sign of the end of the age? Because wars have been intensifying as never before. The 20th century will go down as the most violent period in recorded history. And the technology of war continues to advance rapidly. The development and manufacture of advanced new weapons is moving ahead at a frightening pace. And alarmingly, nuclear weapons continue to proliferate around the globe. The greatest arms race in history is spiraling dangerously out of control. Global arms sales are now measured in the tens of billions of U.S. dollars each year. This is an era of ultimate weapons, bearing the potential for global extinction. Never before has mankind faced such a possibility. It's just as Jesus Christ prophesied in Matthew 24, verse 22. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. Now, some might object to this sort of talk about war and its effects. It sounds perhaps unduly pessimistic and somewhat out of step. Haven't we of late been seeing some encouraging developments in the opposite direction, in the direction of world peace and the easing of international tensions? To all appearances, relations between the United States and the Soviet Union have been growing warmer. Some classes of weapons are even being eliminated from their superpower arsenals. We see similar developments elsewhere. A ceasefire in the Iran-Iraq war. Soviet troops withdrawing from Afghanistan. So are we entering a new era of peace on earth as many would like to believe? Well, here again, the Bible provides understanding that's available nowhere else. You see, the Bible long ago prophesied an apparent trend toward peace before the greatest armed conflict the world has ever known. Here it is. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. Outward appearances can be deceiving. And despite recent improvements, deep down the root causes of war, such as selfishness, aggression, and greed, remain untouched. When it comes to the basic issues involving self-interest and survival, nations haven't learned how to settle their differences peacefully. The world simply doesn't know the way to peace. As long as nations want to exploit and dominate each other, they will wage war. And on his final end time ride, the red horseman of war will inflict an intensity of destruction far beyond the wars that have periodically scourged mankind through history. Mankind's long history of war will culminate in a devastating and bloody end time fulfillment. All this is symbolized by the terrible red horseman as he rides across the world taking peace from the earth with his great sword. I know this isn't a pleasant subject, but hiding our heads in the sand won't make it go away. We need to wake up and understand where our world is heading. For that reason, I'd like to offer you a free booklet that explains the subject in much greater detail. It's the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Since these four grim writers appeared in vision to the Apostle John, their meaning has haunted the imagination of scholars and laymen alike. What do they represent? Chapter 1, Christ the Revelator, describes how Jesus Christ himself revealed the true meaning for our day of these four mysterious writers. Chapter 2 reveals the true identity of the rider of the white horse and the conditions culminating in the end-time fulfillment of this prophecy. Chapter 3 focuses on the terrible red horseman, representing the scourge of war. The remaining chapters describe in vivid detail the identities of the horsemen riding the black and pale horses. This is something the Bible says is going to have a great impact on your life in the years ahead. So be sure to request this free booklet, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Along with this booklet, if you're not already a subscriber, we'll be sending you a sample copy of the Plain Truth magazine, a truly unique publication. The Plain Truth analyzes world news in the light of Bible prophecy. It also contains articles dealing with family and social issues. And there's no subscription price. I'll be offering this literature again at the end of today's program. But now let's continue with our subject, 
the red horseman of the apocalypse. As we saw earlier, the Bible shows that the white horseman represents false religious or political philosophy. In the sequence of John's vision, the red horse follows the white. It follows as a logical consequence of the actions of the white horseman. Man's misguided religious and political ideas have historically led to war. Likewise, the remaining two horsemen riding their black and pale mounts arise as a consequence of the red horseman. Christ's prophecy recorded in Matthew 24 confirms that the black horse and its rider in Revelation represent famine, and the pale horse with its rider represents sickness and death. And history's record illustrates that famine and disease epidemics often follow in the wake of wars. But what about the future? The events of history provide us with clues to future prophetic events. These clues show us how prophecy may work out. Prophecy generally provides only the barest outlines of coming events. But when history and prophecy are joined together to bear on the future, we can gain a great deal of additional insight into how events will unfold. As Winston Churchill, the former British Prime Minister, once observed, the farther backward you can look, the farther forward you are likely to see. That's true. So let's look at some of the examples in history of the four horsemen's journey through the earth. A dramatic one occurred in the memory of most of us. I'm referring to the tragic Cambodian Holocaust. Few have understood that misguided political philosophies are, in fact, a type of false religion or false faith. And as such, they fulfill the symbolism of the white horsemen. Cambodia's new leaders were messianic in their zeal to purge their country of any corrupting Western influence and establish a utopian communist government. In Cambodia, or Kampuchea as they renamed it, this white horseman served as the catalyst for a particularly bloody ride of the Red Horsemen of War. Few countries in modern history have suffered such unspeakable horror. In April 1975, Khmer Rouge forces of Pol Pot seized control of Cambodia in bitter fighting. The Khmer Rouge regime quickly turned the once tranquil Southeast Asian country into a brutal killing field of terror and genocide. During the years of Khmer Rouge rule, from two to four million Cambodians are estimated to have died under the brutality of the Pol Pot regime. Many died from malnutrition and disease. The Red Horsemen of war and strife led in turn to food shortages and starvation, pictured by the ominous Black Horsemen of Revelation, and weakened by hunger, countless thousands fell prey to sickness and disease symbolized by the pale horseman. One horseman simply paves the way for the next. A calamity of even greater magnitude had occurred a few decades earlier in Europe. The Second World War provides yet another 20th century example of how a misguided political philosophy led to devastating war, famine, disease, and death. In many respects, Adolf Hitler was a false messiah, a type or forerunner of the White Horsemen. Hitler spoke repeatedly of inaugurating a thousand-year Reich, a millennium of peace and prosperity. But he triggered instead a bloody world war, symbolized again by the Red Horsemen. That war, in turn, led to widespread food shortages and starvation, the Black Horsemen, and consequent disease and death, the Pale Horsemen, for millions of Jews, Russians, Poles, Ukrainians, Gypsies, and other peoples in wide areas of Europe. Let's now look at one final historic example, perhaps the most dramatic of all. The breakdown of church unity in the wake of the Protestant revolt and the resulting wars of religion. The animosities caused by religious scandals of the 1500s led in 1618 to the outbreak of the most terrible of all religious conflicts, the Thirty Years' War. It began as a strife between Catholic and Protestant, but quickly grew into a life and death struggle between the French Bourbons and the Austrian-Spanish Habsburgs for the mastery of Europe. Not since Attila the Hun 
had the Red Horsemen of War inflicted such butchery and destruction on the continent of Europe. The extensive devastation of the countryside by war resulted in enormous misery and hardship, including severe food shortages. Starvation was widespread. Now, there are many other examples from centuries past, but I think we've seen more than enough to demonstrate that the four horsemen represent trends that have occurred throughout history. These trends will greatly intensify in the years ahead, just before Jesus Christ returned to this earth. The four horsemen will again appear as we approach the ultimate crisis at the close of this age, but they'll impact us on a global scale, and this time, they'll complete their terrible ride plunging the earth into a mega crisis, the like of which has never been experienced. But where does that leave you? Even those who know what lies ahead would seem to have limited options in our modern world. In the Middle Ages, there were places one could go to escape the effects of the Red Horsemen, to remote valleys or to distant cities or countries. But in our age of doomsday weapons, there's seemingly no place to hide. Does that mean there is no way of escape from the chaos and calamity that lies ahead? By no means. Jesus himself said it was possible to be protected from what's coming. In Luke 21 and verse 36, we read, Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Christ spoke of protection for those who will heed this warning, stay alert, watch world events, change their lives, and start obeying God's commandments. God can protect those who take action. Dangers of truly global dimension now confront mankind as never before. World events are moving inexorably toward the prophesied final conflict at the end of this age. Nearly 6,000 years of human experience have brought mankind to the point where mankind could destroy all life on this earth. Nations have rejected the way of God, the way that would produce peace. They have chosen to go their own way and have reaped the terrible consequences. Those nations could yet avert those prophesied tragedies if they would only change their ways. But unfortunately, the prospects appear grim. But the good news is that the peaceful world tomorrow will follow closely on their heels. From the destruction of war, the world will erupt into global peace. The devastating cycle of suffering and destruction inflicted for millennia by the four horsemen will at last be broken forever. That's the gospel or good news that this program has been proclaiming on radio and television for over 50 years. That incredible time is spoken of in the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 4, a time when they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. You need to know more about the events that are prophesied for the future and to understand why what seems at first to be bad news is actually leading to very good news. But don't take my word for it. What you need to do is study and prove for yourself what I've said today. And now before closing, let me offer you today's free literature, this booklet, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and The Plain Truth Magazine. First, let me show you this intriguing free booklet, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. It explains in greater detail the meaning of these four horses and their riders, as revealed by Jesus Christ. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse will help you grasp the significance of these prophecies that might at first seem so hard to understand. Chapter 1, Christ the Revelator, shows how Jesus Christ revealed the meaning of these four horsemen. The next four chapters explain the identity of each of these four mysterious writers and shows what their significance is in end-time prophecy. The last chapter, Chapter 6, shows how important it is to understand what the future will bring. The Bible shows the progression of these dramatic events and how they are prophesied to ultimately conclude. These prophecies of the book of Revelation needn't remain a mystery. All of this material is thoroughly explained in this informative free booklet, 
the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, we have nothing to sell in the World Moral Program. All of our literature is yours, free for the asking, no cost or obligation whatsoever. And if you're not already a subscriber, we'll be sending you a sample copy of The Plain Truth, a magazine of understanding. The Plain Truth gives you insight and information that you won't find anywhere else. The Plain Truth does more than just report what's happening in our world. It analyzes world trends in the light of Bible prophecy. A recent example is this article, Trade Wars, Who Will Win? Amid talk of trade deficits, protectionist tariffs, and retaliation, long-simmering disputes over world trade are threatening to boil over. Are we about to see a full-blown trade war develop? Need to understand where these future geopolitical and economic shifts in the world are headed. The Plain Truth also addresses social issues that affect your daily life, such as drug abuse, coping with stress, building strong family ties. With articles such as these, we know you'll find The Plain Truth to be helpful and informative. There's no magazine like it, and there's absolutely no subscription price. It's yours free for as long as you want. So once again, be sure to request today's free literature, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and The Plain Truth magazine. Please telephone for the cost of a local call, 008 074-222. That's 008-074-222. We have many operators waiting, but if you don't get through right away, call us again in 10 or 15 minutes. That's 008-074-222. Now we realize that some of you may prefer to write to us for the free literature offered on today's program. Then simply address your request to The World Tomorrow, GPO Box 345, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001. That's The World Tomorrow, GPO Box 345, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001. On next week's program, David Hume will be discussing one of modern society's greatest plagues. No matter where you live, no one is free from its impact. Crack. Marijuana. Designer drugs. PCP, cocaine. The use of drugs is a worldwide problem which is rapidly growing out of control. We'll be asking the experts about why it's happening and what we can do to stop this insidious scourge on society. Don't miss next week's insightful program, The Drug Dilemma. We certainly hope you'll join us next week at this same time. Thanks for being with us today. I'm David Albert for the world tomorrow. The preceding program and all literature were produced and sponsored by the Worldwide Church of God.